the fans did not want the Bruno era to be over. I didn't want it to be over. Nobody wanted Bruno to be over. And I also realized if anybody can get Bruno out of retirement to do something, you automatically became a star. The business of the WWF in those days was not good. The, the McMahons, their business was on the verge of bankruptcy. McMahon Sr. and Bruno never got along. There was a little, tons of heat. You know, they, they hated each other. Anybody in the wrestling business is not normal. One time in Madison Square Garden, I mean, you know, some guys do gigs. Albano's gig was this long. I hit Lou one time in the garden when, we, when me and Gorilla were wrestling the Valiants. I hit him in the head one time. Lou falls down, and he's laying there going like this. I've seen this. I mean, like this. I'm going, stop it, <laughs> Putsky. I went out with your mother. She sucks. You know, and Putsky ignores her. Hey, Putsky, you know, he does something else. Putsky, you know, Putsky ignores him. And we're doing our thing, and all of a sudden the guy says, Hey, Putsky, you're short. Putsky jumped out of the ring and started <laughs> slapping the hell out of this guy. In my hometown, my dream came true. Yeah. I'm driving up to the Pittsburgh Civic Arena where I was a kid, you know, throwing stuff at the bad guys. And now my name is on the marquee, and not just on it, it was against, you know, Bruno, who was my hero and the biggest name ever up there. Like if you were like watching him wrestle in the Civic Arena <laughs> and Bruno would start bleeding and fall over, people would get heart attacks and die. We know Bob, God bless him, can't draw a dime. So and then nothing personal, none of this stuff was personal, this was all business. Mm -hmm. It was the perfect time to get the belt off of Bob. I'm the guy with the heat. So it wasn't fair, you know, that Backlin was making more money than me at that time because no one cared about Bob. I called Bruno and I said, well, I tried to talk to Vince Sr. He hung up on me and told me to forget the whole thing. Bruno, again with the heat, Bruno says, oh, he did. Well, here's what we're going to do. <laughs> what? Now again, I'm 26. I don't have a clue what you're going to do or what you can do. This is where I learned about the really what goes on when the top talent deals with the top promoter. Now I got the kid, me, the dumb kid, and Vince's kid are both caught in the middle of the biggest star of the time, Bruno, the biggest promoter of the time, along with the biggest business that the business ever did. Vince Jr. starts crying on the phone. You go, Larry, God damn it, you're killing my father! Now, I don't know if Vince crying on the phone is why I've never worked for the WWF or whatever EF they were, or what, but this is the kind of stuff that's yeah. going on, the game. After I hit Bruno with the chair and left, if you've watched those tapes, there was no riot. There was really not people going, you know, ape crap so much. People were sitting there. I remember, because I can see some of the faces of these old ladies and the fans. They were like this. It didn't register for a while. It might have taken a couple days. People went into shock. They didn't expect it. All I did after this was, was walk on TV and the new living legend, that's all I had to say. I could start a riot at the drop of a hat, which wound up getting me stabbed in the ass one night in Albany. Bruno never beat me. He never pinned me, he, out of he never cage. beat me. In all those months, the only thing he ever did at the blow off was walk out of the cage. And the only reason he did that, because there was thoughts of me winning. Bruno didn't think I would make it from the cage 
to the dugout if I beat him. Shea Stadium could have had a one, it could have been a one match card. 